precautions since you're not going to be sitting here a lot. <laughs> Good evening. This is the March 10th, 2020 meeting of the Middlebury Select Board. Before we call to order, I'm going to swear in Town Clerk Ann Webster, and she in turn is going to swear in a couple of the new Select Board members. You, Ann Webster, solemnly affirm that you will faithfully execute the office of Town Clerk in and for said town and will therein do equal right and justice to all persons in the best of their judgment and abilities according to law. Do you also solemnly affirm that you will support the Constitution of the State of Vermont and of the United States under the pains and penalty of perjury? You do. real now yes <laughs> so Brian Carpenter and Daniel Brown do you solemnly swear or affirm that you'll be true and faithful to the state of Vermont and that you will not directly or indirectly do any act or thing injurious to the Constitution or government thereof so help you God or under the pains and penalties of perjury I do, I do. And further do you solemnly swear or affirm that you'll faithfully execute the elected position of select board member for the town of Middlebury and will therein do equal right and justice to all persons to the best of your judgment and ability according to law. So help you God or under the pains and penalties of perjury. Right. And then, okay. Each of you Hey, uh, don't forget. Yeah, you too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Shake everyone's hand and thank you for your service. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's toes. You're so good role model. So you can keep your six feet. You got to do toes. <laughs> you have my. Well, you're supposed to keep six yeah. feet. Oh. So you do toes. <laughs> I don't know if I can get the six feet. <laughs> I feel comfortable over here. <laughs> so. Without further ado, I'll call the meeting to order um, on Tuesday, March 10th, 2020. And the first order of our new select board season is to take nominations for the position of chair. So the floor is open and I'll take nominations. One minute, Brian, for chair. Second. Okay, are there any other nominations for the position of chair? Hearing none. All those in favor of Brian Carpenter for chair of the Middlebury Select Board, please say aye. 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 <clears throat> Any opposed? It's I'll unanimous. <laughs> and I'm going to pass it over to Brian. Well, I guess I thank you for that. It's one of those dubious gifts. <laughs> uh, so next is we. Next item will be to elect a uh, vice chair, and I'll. Solicit. I move Heather. Um, I second. Moved and seconded. Are there any other nominations? Hearing none, all in favor of Heather as vice chair signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? <clears throat> Thank you. Welcome. Now that we have a chair and a vice chair, let's uh, we start the meeting with the approval of the agenda. Moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Are there any um, amendments to the agenda? Hearing none, 
All in favor of the agenda, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Next item is approval of minutes of our <clears throat> February 26th special select board meeting. So moved. Liquor. I second. Moved and seconded. Are there any amendments to those draft minutes? Okay, hearing none, all in favor of approving the minutes as drafted, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? I abstain. I think uh, everybody who's out there recognizes that Dan is our new board member, and we welcome Dan to the board. We're looking forward to working with you, Dan. Thank you. I'm, I'm excited to be here and really honored to be here to serve, so thank you. Next is citizen comments. If there's anybody who's here for something uh, that's not on the agenda, I'd, I'd like to use this time then uh, to address the elephant in the room, which is the college's uh, decision today. If anybody has anything they would like to discuss on, amongst the board on that. Um, the college's uh, notification we sent out through the town uh, email server, the, uh, a town response as well and uh, I would like to share some words from the president of the college to the community <clears throat> let me just pull it up here she said to our friends in the town after some difficult deliberations we have made a decision about our campus in light of the coronavirus we understand that this will have an impact on our lar larger Middlebury community in many ways. In addition to our concern for the well-being of our students, faculty, and staff, and the continuity of our academic mission, we are also taking into consideration the health of the greater community. We appreciate your understanding and partnership in this unprecedented time. We will stay in close touch with community leaders as things evolve. Yours cordially, Lori Patton, President of Middlebury College. I know this is going to have a big impact on a lot of the businesses in our town too, and, and uh, you know it's it's something that uh, we really haven't had a chance to fully process. But um, are there any any concerns as far as things that we should be doing on our end? just say quickly I was I'm not really prepared right at the moment but I was thinking in board member concerns was just going to ask Kathleen what the town's thoughts were and if they had developed only because where I work we're in the process of developing an action and how to handle employees and non essential essential work from home policy um, and uh, was asked by one of my previous employers to be a backup in the event that, you know, illness went through their um, office. So I think it doesn't need to be talked about now, but it would be good to know what the town's plan is um, for, for employees and services. So briefly, we too are in the process of developing a plan, uh, reaching out to department heads uh, and so on. Okay. I just hope the students are not severely impacted with this uh, sudden closure of the college. Uh, a lot of them I have to go back home. Uh, there was a posting on the front porch forum today. Somebody asked, requesting if somebody has additional room in their homes, if they can accommodate some of these kids. Um, I think that'll be good. I do know that the college is prepared for students who it's a hardship to go home yep. to continue to house them. And uh, Lori did call and, and fill me in on some of the some of the plans. I certainly am not privy to all of them, but that was one of the issues that they're they're in touch with and, and understand that for some kids it's either um, not possible for them to go home and continue their studies, or it's a real hardship for them to do that. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm fully sympathetic to what the college is doing and understand, but. Obviously, I have a concern of what's going to happen economically in the town to businesses, but also um, the college, or what's going to happen to a significant number of their employees. 
Um, obviously, with the students not on campus, um, there might not need, be a need for the things like the grills are not probably going to open, the, the food service people, um, and what the trickle-down effect will that have on our community with our citizens not being, un being unemployed, and if it gets even more serious of our local businesses. Um, so I, I just think it's something that we will and should monitor. Yeah, my son works at the, at the grill on the weekends. Uh, he's a high school student, and uh, he got an email. Uh, he's got five weeks off, so and, and that's the least impact for a little kid, but for regular employees, I think that's a big impact, not working for five weeks. So I guess we'll we'll uh, try to we'll keep the community informed as we hear um, through our channels. So certainly, the college will be continuing <coughs> to put out their information, but uh, to the maximum extent possible, uh, our our community is going to be uh, our community is going to be affected, and and uh, let's let's make sure we're doing whatever we can to make sh to to mitigate the risk and and continue to support the community. Uh, next is our board organization. Uh, we need to set our regular meeting date. And we have been meeting for a number of years, uh, second and fourth Tuesday of each month at 7. And we are, it's flexible when we have a time like, uh, so one that's coming up is a Monday to meet with our state legislators. And that'll be moved ahead to 6, a, uh, 6 p.m so that uh, those legislators want to follow in the meeting can, tr can commute to Montpelier. So th these aren't set in stone, but it's, our, it's a general guideline. Does that continue to work for the board? Yes. yes. <coughs> so Make a I would, I would. So I'll move to designate, um, I'm sorry. I'll move to set the select board's regular meeting time and date as the second and fourth Tuesday of each month at 7 p.m. Second. <coughs> Moved and seconded. Does it work for everybody? Mm -hmm. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, next is to establish uh, a newspaper of record for the publication of official notices of the town. Uh, the Addison Independent is currently the publication of record. I'll make a motion uh, to designate the Addison Independent as the newspaper of record for the publication of official notices of the town of Middlebury. Second. Moved and seconded. Are there any comments on that motion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. Uh, Next, we have an opportunity to make a couple early annual appointments. If we would like, we can take care of a couple of appointments right now. Addison County Solid Waste Management District Board of Supervisors, we're, we get a Middlebury delegate and an alternate on that board. Uh, resident Eric Murray is currently the town's delegate. He, and he has expressed interest in continuing to serve in that capacity. Did you hear from Amy? Amy um, very much enjoyed serving the town, but she will not be able to continue uh, going forward. So we'll include that with the rest of the advertisements uh, for appointment. Okay. So uh, given his experience, uh, I, I think it would be an early appointment uh, that, that uh, would be wise if you guys uh, are in support of it. Mm -hmm. I'll move to appoint Eric Murray as Middlebury's delegate to the Addison County Solid Waste Management Dis District Board of Supervisors. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Uh, and the other one, uh, especially as we get towards spring so that the planning can occur is a green up day coordinator and malt volunteer in 2019 green up day coordinator Caleb <coughs> Bassa has indicated he is willing to act as the 2020 coordinator if the board is amenable 
I'll move to appoint Caleb Bassa as Green Up Day Coordinator for 2020. Second. Any comments on that? Hearing none, all in favor of appointing Caleb as our Green Up Day Coordinator, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. So we have a couple of our early appointments done that are kind of necessary to continue business. Next is uh, we've got some more 2020 liquor licenses that Ann will review with us. Here tonight, as if the board is amenable, uh, you have in your packet uh, requests for liquor license renewals for four entities and I would like to add to that um, freestyle brewing which does business as drop-in brewing on Route 7 South and Tavern on the T uh, which is at 317 Golf Course Road those were late arrivals and couldn't make it into your packet but if you wanted to um, add those in that would be fine, otherwise they'll come back to you next time. <laughs> and everything is there for all of them? Yes, everything has been approved by um, fire and police chiefs. And Freestyle Brewing is a first class and an outside consumption. And Tavern on the T is a first class. Neither of them have the third class. I'll move to approve all renewal applications for first, second, and third class liquor licenses and outdoor consumption permits as presented by Town Clerk Ann Wimster, including two additions. Second. Moved and seconded. Are there any questions on those? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Thank you, Ann. Thank you. Okay, as uh, discussed at our January 14th meeting, the Creek Road Task Force is prepared to give us their final recommendation. I'm gonna turn this over to Heather and Peter. Thank you. Hi, Peter. Hi, Heather. You wanna take us? Sure. <coughs> take us final or? might be a stretch. <laughs> 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 um, first of all, I wanted to um, so I'd say it's been a pleasure working with the with the task force um, and uh, thank all the work that Heather uh, Luther Tenney Dean Raym and Dean George have have done and um, the insights they've given given the committee on this it's been uh, really good working with the with the group with them um, included in the board package are two documents um, a list of the the main the list of the main alternatives that we looked at um, and also uh, the recommended option um, the committee looked at well over 10 different options ranging every everywhere from um, doing a significant armoring project uh, along um, uh, along the banks of Otter Creek um, and stabilizing the road um, to various options that close down different sections of the road um, we focus uh, primarily on some preliminary cost estimates, what the permanent considerations were, uh, and what the requirements were uh, are for um, in the state statutes for the towns, the towns' obligations to maintain maintain the roads, and what the requirements are for the different classes of roads. Um, based on the touching on that aspect of it first, based on input from uh, Vermont League of Cities and Towns and Town Legal Council. Uh, we found that state law requires the town um, to maintain class three roads. Um, and it also um, allows you not to maintain class four roads um, and they may be gated. However, they are uh, under state statute, they're not supposed to be locked. Um, as most of you know, uh, Creek Road from Court Street all the way down to Three Mile Bridge Road is a class three road. Um, and it's currently gated and for the most part it's currently locked um, so the town is currently not in compliance with state statute the way the current condition of the road um, so after considering all the different alternatives um, the task force ultimately came to the following conclusion uh, conclusions uh, first of all long-term maintenance of Creek Road and its current location and proximity to Otter Creek 
uh, is cost prohibitive. Um, the preliminary cost estimates, four to five million to, to fix the road in its entirety and then stepping down from there with the different options. Um, the committee consensus was it just wasn't practical for the town to invest that kind of money in the road when we have so many other public works needs that the town has. Um, second, second and almost as important is that ultimately the river is going to win. Regardless of what we do there, um, that large sections of the road are in floodplain. Um, there's significant eros erosive forces on the stream bank. The road is directly adjacent to the creek in a lot of different locations. And ultimately, regardless of what the town does there, um, we may be able to repair some areas, but the, the problem is just going to keep moving. Um, and lastly, that the town is not uh, currently in compliance with state statutes with what, what is currently in place with a section of the road being closed. Um, so based on uh, the committee's review of the pros and cons of the various alternatives, uh, the co committee ultimately settled on alternative eight, which is the second document in your, in your package. Um, the committee spent quite a bit of time working on the wording for the recommendation. Um, so what I'd like to do is just read what we worded so there's no misinterpretation or I don't misinterpret what the committee uh, voted on. Um, so alternative A is to perform interim repairs to the road uh, in order to open it to through traffic in a safe condition. Obtain easements and or land acquisition such that within five years, uh, goal of five years, there is uh, alternative access available to the property owners along Creek Road. Um, the, this alternative would include interim improvements, maintenance and monitoring of the road to allow it to open from Court Street to Three Mile Bridge. Improvements could include a combination of guardrails and minor realignments uh, within the existing right-of-way with the goal of extending use of the road to the extent possible while being fiscally responsible with town funds. The town would undertake a collaborative process with property owners and other stakeholders to find alternative means for long-term access, such that the next time there is a major uh, there is a, there is major damage or failure to the road, there is a plan in place to avoid significant repair cost. Um, the handout goes on to discuss some of the pros and cons we identified uh, for alternative eight um, and some outstanding questions. <coughs> um, the second uh, page of the alternative eight handout. Um, talks about the step forward, the steps forward, and breaks it into two different phases. Um, first phase is to work with uh, public works and emergency services to determine what the minimum repairs are for the town to feel comfortable to open the road up to to through traffic uh, from Creek Road down to the Three Mile Bridge Road, um, and it, to bring the road into compliance with current state statutes. Um, and then also during phase two, the town would. Um, uh, excuse me, also during phase one, um, the town would begin discussions in collaboration with landowners to explore options for easements and or acquisitions to provide alternative access to, to those landowners. Phase two uh, of, the, of the steps forward uh, would be to complete an action plan uh, with stakeholders that identifies the goals and timeline for alternative access and lays out a course, course of action in the event of future stream bank and road deterioration. Um, during phase two, the town would also uh, work towards finalizing negotiations with landowners. Um, the action plan would only be implemented in the event of uh, future road damage. Um, that's kind of the alternative eight in a nutshell and where the, where the committee is. Um, I guess I'd like to ask if there's anything from the task force that I haven't touched on that you guys want to want to bring up. I think you've covered it very well. Um, so with that, I'd open it up to the board for questions on our recommendations or, or, or even any of the alternatives that we consider. You, you didn't indicate um, the cost of this <laughs> implementing this recommendation. We, we considered doing initial cost estimates, but we felt it was important for um, public, both public works and emergency services to weigh in on what was appropriate. Um, so there is more work to be done. We felt it was important to present to the board given the time that's gone by, um, but we really feel that it's important for, uh, for the police, fire, rescue, and, and um, 
uh, and the Public Works to weigh in on that rather than us coming so up with an estimate for it. I guess my concern is that uh, this sort of this approval, um, and I'm really not. Um, it does seem to me my, my concern is that I'm very skeptical about uh, continuing this road. Mm -hmm. um, if, it were, if, if it weren't there, we'd never we'd never think of putting a road in a floodplain. Uh, uh, I think that um, this simply opens it up, and when when uh, Public Works decides, uh, you know what the what the costs are, then what do we do? We, we appropriate the money or say, no, we're not going to do it. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm a little, I would, before, I, 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 I will not vote for this without knowing how much it's going to cost. And if it seems too much, I'll vote no. Mm -hmm. I, I guess um, maybe I should try to clarify at least my understanding of what the committee is, at, is, is here for tonight. Uh, we're here to give you a progress report uh, and a recommended direction. I don't think the committee is asking the select board to approve a budget for improvements at this point in time. Uh, Heather, would you concur uh, with I that? I would agree. Yeah. So, so, I, so it's, we're, we're, we're presenting the approach that we want to take. There's more work that needs to be done, um, but, the, but we want to get the select board's buy-in that yes, we're heading in an agreeable direction and future meetings and future approval are necessary. So <coughs> if we approve alternative eight as presenter or as amended, does it mean that regardless of the cost, we're going to just go with it or what's the, that's I, the question. I don't, I don't think that's what we're asking for. I think this is more of a progress report um, and to get feedback from the board uh, with the understanding that there's more work necessary than necessarily than, than an approval of alternative. Yeah, the mo the, but the recommendation is, I'm, the motion is asking is to approve alternative eight. So, so uh, uh, let me just jump in here. That, that, is, a, that is a possible motion. <clears throat> Understanding there's maybe some information that you like before you said that that was the recommended course of action for sure yeah. we could say we are accepting the the committee's report and ask for staff to give us what would be necessary with an estimated cost before we finalize the going towards because we'll have to see where we're going to get the funds and timeline there's a lot of stuff to do but maybe the the correct maybe the feeling of the board is that okay we've we've heard it we accept the report and we're gonna from the board ask staff to look at that recommendation not look at the other recommendations look at at, option, at alternative eight and tell us what would be necessary for to safely open that road and provide us a cost estimate so a couple of a couple of aspects of the of the, the next steps that the board that someone needs to take, that the town needs to take, um, is to do a detailed analysis of what work needs to be done to the road to open it up, uh, and also to begin discussions with, uh, with property owners. We didn't feel, w without getting some concurrence from the board that yes, we're heading in the right, the, the right direction, yeah. we didn't want to spend time getting cost estimates and, uh, and coming up with a plan for what these minor repairs would be if the board wants us to ultimately open the road up to through traffic as, as a long-term plan. We wanted the board's feedback on, like Victor said, um, you know, whether you want to close, close, keep the road closed, whether you want, whether you want to open it up. And in, in relation to negotiation with property owners, the committee didn't feel that we had the obligation, we had, we had the authority to have, begin discussions with property owners uh, without the select board's approval. Yes, Dick. I'm, I'm actually, th thanks for clarifying that up because I came in here like Victor ready to say, no way. You know, I'm not, gonna, this is like an old, to me it, at this point it looked like an open checkbook. Yeah, being that asked for. But having had that clarified, that helps quite a bit. Um, 
among the questions that I'd have. And when I see things like a major damage, well, that's kind of an abstract term. What does that really mean? Uh, and that, that gets into the, the, the phase two of the action plan. Okay. I, I envision the action plan including what does, when is the action plan implemented? And, and, uh, and also, when is the point where we say, okay, I mean, looking at five years, well, we may be fine in five years, we may be fine in 10, mm -hmm. we might have something this spring that takes it out and suddenly goes beyond mm -hmm. what is an acceptable level of cost. So I think what we need to have is an idea, one, what it would cost to, to implement this as is, mm -hmm. then how much are we as a community willing to spend over, say, the next five years to take care of this road, mm -hmm. realizing that if we exceed that, then that's the end of the story. Mm -hmm. we're, you know, no more. Um, we're, we're, we're not going to proceed with any more. The road is declassified or whatever it is, and that's that's it. Uh, because we can't have this as an open, as is, I know everybody in the committee, in the task group agrees, we can't have this as an open checkbook. Uh, and, and there was, and then we start getting, of course, <coughs> outstanding questions. Again, once again, modest or excessive. That's, that's an abstract term that means nothing. We, mm -hmm. we could have seven different opinions as to what that means, plus Kathleen could have a different opinion, and Dan and, and Bill could have a different opinion. So that needs to really be quantified. Uh, so there are questions. I, I think if what you're asking for is to at least approve in principle moving on with this idea um, and, and getting the details, then I can concur with that. Mm -hmm. I, I would look to the committee to answer that particular question. But <clears throat> So I know Luther and Dean both uh, wanted to say something and I'm fine with them having a turn but I, if you want to ask the other board members first that's if, if I could ask one other question just before we do you, you made you, a, a comment that was made and, and you're not the first one to say this the river's ultimately going to win is there what's the risk that if we open this road again we're actually accelerating that chance of failure by putting more dynamic load onto the road if it, if it's going, if it's going to, you're asking me a geotechnical question. I, I, that I'm I not going to answer in public. It, and, and I, don't, I didn't expect you to have the answer, Peter. It's sort of a more of a the, the bigger question. What, what the committee talked about for opening the road up is similar to what the the minor repairs that you've done on the northern section of the road, where certain sections of the road where the where the um, where the road is starting to slough in, uh -huh. putting guardrails in and doing short sections of of single lane traffic as an example or alternatively where that can't be done shifting the road over staying within the right of way um, but shifting the road over slightly just by adding additional gravel on the on the uh, away from this on the side away from the stream so those are the, the those are the kind of the order of magnitude changes that um, that we talked about um, some of the concern was that the southern section of the road with with the exception of one or two relatively small portions of it, that's actually not the bad, the bad end of the road. Uh, it's the north end that's, that's the more problematic uh, section. Um, so the, the discussion was why are, we, why are we throwing up, why are we closing sections of the road that really aren't that bad? And then similarly, why are we throwing up sections of the road if we can make modest repairs to keep it open? And, yeah, but work towards a plan for what happens when the repairs are more significant. Then as the individual to determine when the road is safe, you know, because it's the, the aspect of their monitoring the road, mm -hmm. would that tend to be the public works director? Would he be the, the person that responsible for that? I would advocate for it be the public works director and or the police chief. Okay, thanks, I'm done. Can I just add one? I just wanted to, you know, part of our conversation on the committee level was the recognition that we hadn't really had any kind of meaningful conversation with property owners individually. And so part of this is trying to get the road open back up in a condition <coughs> where it can be used. So those conversations could be had without the stress of the road closed. And that once we have those conversations and can work with landowners and have an understanding with them of what we're trying to do, then when decisions need to be made, hopefully they're made, everybody's in agreement and we can move forward together as one. So that was part of, I think, our desire to get the road open so that those conversations with land property owners could maybe have a different tone, so. 
Can you, can you come up and use the mic, Dean? Sure. Grab, just grab that chair out of the... Essentially, I was just going to add to what Heather was saying. The critical thing for us is we really haven't gotten into any serious discussions with the two property owners primarily who have residences and need Creek Road to access their residences. How much does the town get involved? in participating in finding alternatives for them. We do have agriculture use on the southern end, uh, but that's not as critical in terms of them being able to get to that. Uh, but finding a way forward with the two residences in particular without closing the road is going to be a challenge and take some time. So the five years was sort of put in place so that we knew that within that timeline we should come up with a solution. And, and I've actually met with the one that's the furthest down and the most difficult to access okay. before we started the task force and there is feelings of an obligation that that we provide an access and so right and that's is, a huge it challenge is very diff challenging yeah. so to solve that and so as you know in the years past we did perform modest uh, maintenance on the road to try to keep it open and there were times during the spring runoff and so forth where it was closed temporarily and reopened. If that's possible to continue during this interim period until we can figure out how we're going to access those properties mm -hmm. and then consider what the future is of the road, you need that time. We actually had looked at an estimate to provide an alternative access and that wasn't cheap also. Right. Well, I think that goes back to my point though is it, it uses a driveway there's a fairly low number of vehicles that are using it on a daily basis used as a road it could be exactly uh, personally I don't think that's a heavily used road anyway and I, but I don't have numbers and it's, it's a bit anecdotal but you're still putting more vehicles on and so there's more impact load on it so are we accelerating deterioration of the road by having as a road versus a driveway and it's possible hopefully you're not making it that inviting of a road right right Thank you. Okay, thank you, Dean. Luther? Uh, thank you, most uh, Luther Tenney. I'm on the Infrastructure Committee and the Task Force, so thanks for having me here. Um, fundamentally, we wanted the, uh, the proposal to be one of collaboration uh, to allow you know, reduce tensions, have a responsibility to open the road back up, but then a lot of people want to weigh in on the future use of that road, whether it be a trail, you know, put up for sale, you name it. Um, but uh, in the meantime, we have a responsibility to open the road. Um, you could look at this a thousand different ways in terms of cost estimates. Uh, so I agree we wanted to get consensus on the direction that we were heading so that we can obviously feed more detailed information to you in the future on what it would take to open the road or what the emergency action plans would be. Some of those are contingent on what the landowners would be amenable to and we don't have that information to be able to make those decisions. One of the things that I think the committee would like to... Can, can you speak into the oh, mic because we do yeah. transcribe these minutes? One, one of the things that um, I think the committee would like to see from the select board tonight is um, authorization for Kathleen or some other appointee of the board to begin, while, while we're characterizing the initial steps of the property owners as just collaborative discussions, effectively they're, they're ultimately going to turn into negotiations. So we felt it was important that that person, whoever, who is, whoever is having those conversations um, has the authority to speak on behalf of the town uh, as the initial phase of negotiations. And we didn't feel any, anyone on the committee had that authorization. I, I understand that, Peter. Uh, can, I, can I get uh, a motion for discussion at least to accept the report of the Creek Road Task Force and tentatively support it pending staff bringing us more details on cost estimates and uh, timelines. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. 
So um, just a couple of things I think became obvious as part of this group was um, there is no no cost alternative. Um, even choosing to give up the road is going to have some cost. Um, and given that the town has probably some obligation, which we don't know how much and to what degree for uh, at least the residents ha to have the access to their property, we would have some costs associated with that. But until you've negotiated with those property owners to find out what's acceptable to them, what's acceptable to the town, we can't even identify what those costs are. And so to try to compare like uh, throwing up the road or downgrading to a trail, um, I think you had a great term, Peter, was a property impact assessment um, for, you know, you know, some kind of term for how to maybe compensate landowners, property owners for the impact of losing the road to their property. But I think it's going to be very clear very quickly that there, it's going to cost money no matter what direction we go. So I think when we start saying worrying about how much we're going to spend on interim repairs, I think we should be prepared for the fact that we're going to have to spend money either way, no matter what we do there. So. Um, but we need to get more information to get to the point to know what that what those costs are going to be. So there's an, and I and I think you you hit on the motion is right. Um, but again, yeah, it's going to cost. But also, it's going to cost initially, and then there's there's the potential for <laughs> a fairly much a very high cost during. I'm not even sure why five years is. is I think it needs to be much no. faster than that personally. But um, because five years is a pretty long window, and we just see as we look at the history of damage that happens to the river or the, the road from the river that there could be there may be nothing in five years that's significant but there could be some incidents that that take what we consider initially as an acceptable cost and we have to add a lot more money and to keep this road open so yeah there's cost all around so that's why I, I think the principle of what Brian with the motion says is acceptable uh, we just have to define what we need clearly but then also we have to be cognizant again of staff time you know this is the thing that always comes back is how much is it going to take and I'm looking at this in our five items of the year and, and this is going to be a big one and it's going to take a lot of time so I'm, I agree with the principle of the motion but um, we still have <laughs> we have work to go before we can actually fully accept it I, I just have a question it, it's it's not like we have um, the ability not to make some type of um, motion or some type of acceptance of to move forward right that's correct so um, we can we can say the impacts and everything but we have to do something so um, I agree with the, the clarification um, I'm just saying it's it's maybe too early to throw things out there like it's gonna be too expensive and we might not do it and it, we might have a storm in five or ten years right. so um, are we ready to Take the motion to vote. Still very skeptical. It does seem to me really, um, I mean, what I had hoped that you would come up with is okay. Uh, <laughs> I mean, we, we realize that this is a, this is a costly, uh, uh, something that's going to cost the town one way or the other. There are property owners who have. Uh, um, uh, use rights of the property and it seems to me the town has an obligation uh, to satisfy those uh, those rights I, I have no I have no quarrel with that uh, at the same time we have what seems to me to be a very unsatisfactory situation uh, of a road that shouldn't be there uh, and uh, perhaps a very nice, it's a very scenic spot, and it would be very nice to keep the property and have a trail, uh, but uh, uh, I read this report as being, well, well, we'll sort of just do what we can over the years to keep the road open, and we'll come up with some idea of what it's going to cost uh, to do something. But I really don't know what that something is, and I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I mean, I, I feel this is not being fiscally responsible. 
this isn't a, this isn't a motion to spend the money though. Hmm? This isn't a motion to spend the money. This isn't. This is not spending the money. No, 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 no. I realize, but I, I, I even, even acceptance. I mean, I received the report as information, but I don't um, um, want to say this is great <laughs> or this is all right. Uh, I, 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 I don't find it a satisfactory report. But, but there's, there's no other alternatives. I mean, there's. There's no other less expensive alternative on here besides closing the road. And from what I understand from the cons on here that there's state issues and potential lawsuit issues and stuff like that. So we, I think we need to really continue to press on and at least take a, a look at it and find out how much it is going to cost and, and wait for that big storm that's gonna come and take out the whole road. Mm -hmm. and, and that'll be a different issue. But. I think for me the the most important piece of of the report was was that sort of second phase of of exploring alternative access for those um, for those property owners because as you said the river's going to win and until we you know initially when we had talked about closing the road what I was uncomfortable with was just that so what happens to the people that live there um, and so I really appreciate that this provides that path forward and, and puts, um, puts the town in a position to uh, speak with the property owners, negotiate with the property owners, and come up with hopefully, and you're right, hopefully a solution quicker than five years, but come up with a, a, a more permanent solution because we are, you know, we are ultimately waiting for a, a big storm to mm -hmm. sort of force our hand in a lot of ways. Um, but I wasn't comfortable voting to close the road without that plan in place. So I appreciate that this puts that plan in place for how we're going to move forward and, and how those people are going to access their, their property. And, and Victor, I don't, I don't think what we're recommending is inconsistent mm -hmm. with, I don't think what we're recommending is inconsistent with what you're saying. Um, I think, I think the key, the key, the key term <coughs> in the, in the first uh, statement of alternative A is that we're going to pursue alternative access. It's not we're going to pursue ways to fix the road. We're going to pursue alternative access so that we have a plan in place so that when the road is damaged by the river, we have, altern we have alternative access, different, different drives, whatever, easements in place so that it can be implemented. Um, but as far as the costs are concerned, again, we don't know the cost because we don't know what the impacts of those property owners are because we haven't talked with the property owners. Mm -hmm. So again, this is this is the direction we recommend heading. We need we, we want the board's concurrence that they agree that we're heading in in uh, an appropriate direction, readily acknowledging that we have additional the town has additional steps that need to be taken before a final decision can be made with costs and you know signing agreements and all that type of thing. Further questions? So we looked at all the different options. Was cost one of the things you talked about? No, no, options? certainly, yeah. So is this one of the most uh, cost effective, the alternate that you chose, or? Um, I, I'm anticipating that it's gonna be the most cost effective. Okay, one of those things you said is that stakeholders, you are going to collaborate with the landowners to explore options. What if that doesn't happen? So this option goes away, or? Um, if something doesn't, so, <laughs> uh, I'm, so the, the struggle I have is without knowing the cost mm -hmm. of how much this is going to take, we are approving this, but you're also saying that we're going to approve the cost later on? No, no, let me clarify here. We're accepting the report and we're supporting it subject to cost estimates and we're not approving any expenditure of funds at this point. Okay. And if it comes back with a cost estimate that we don't like, we can go to, we can require another option to be looked at. Start again. But based upon the committee's findings, they feel that this is fiscally responsible and gives sufficient time to address two residences that need alternative access. Yes. And try to solve that. And given that we have been talking about alternative access for a couple of years and haven't made any progress, I think 
empowering them to actually start to try to solve that puzzle is a pretty important part of this, of this option. And then when the staff has looked at and made a recommendation on what those options, what needs to be done, they can bring that to us as part of our, I mean, there's plenty of clarifying remarks on this, this motion that we're expecting that to come back from staff. <clears throat> and then we, and you know, we'll be looking for what the, where those funds are coming from too. We have, to, so timing is not, there's no timing approved at this point. We're talking about uh, supporting an option and trying to move forward with one single option instead of continuing Correct. to juggle eight options, nine options. Just a couple of quick things. Um, first, the amount of time that road has been closed is pushing five years now, I believe, that it's been locked and gated. <coughs> and we have had some significant storms, maybe not at the level of Irene, but we have had some significant storms and flood events. And the road is, is still there in some condition within that five year time. So I think the committee felt that five years was a reasonable time to, um, none of us have a crystal ball, obviously. Something could happen this spring and force us to make decisions sooner than we'd hoped. Obviously we would address that at the time, but Five years sets a goal for when we would get the work done by, no later than, and hopefully we can move it along sooner than that. Um, also, just to Victor's point about a trail, you know, as part of this action plan, that may be a direction that we go, but we should identify as part of that action plan if you set a trail up along that and the river continues to win, it's gonna win your trail. And what's the plan for that? How much money are, is the town then willing to spend to maintain a trail? <coughs> um, so that's, well, there's that's more. So I think the point I'm trying to make is there's considerable outstanding questions that we have not yet been able to answer. And I think as part of this proposal, we're gonna try to answer the questions and move forward, but we need more time. Well, certainly, I, I th thanks for the explanations. I'm more comfortable with this direction than I was when we first came in here by a lot because I say I, I was coming in here to vote no, but now with the clarifications, uh, I'm in favor of it. So with that, I'm gonna try to bring us to a vote. <laughs> so what exactly is the motion? Did you describe the motion, Kathleen? No? So I would, the motion was to accept the report of the Creek Road Task Force and to support option eight in principle, <clears throat> subject to the staff bringing us a cost estimate and their staff recommendations to, to accomplish alternative eight. Could I add an addendum to that or suggest an addendum to that? No, um, I'm sorry, you, you just have to speak a little I, bit. I was wondering if I could suggest an addendum to that, um, authorizing um, town staff or representative of the town to, to begin discussions with property owners. With property owners? That's certainly part of the solution. Yes. It, it, that yeah. needs to happen. No, ultimately, that needs to happen. No. Who, who was that you Dan and who, who seconded my motion I you did are you okay with that yeah I seconded the motion. You okay with that yeah yeah okay so you, you are you good with that revised Farhad are you good with that revised motion? I'm good yes <laughs> revised motion all right so we have a motion and a second are there any final questions on that? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? 
that you were raising your hand to oppose it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to knock you with my elbow here. Or something. <laughs> no, I, I'm, I, can I just one say one? Thank you to Luther and Dean and Dean and Peter. Um, I think it was a great group and we didn't all gr agree and it made for great conversation and discussion and I really appreciate the time and effort that they have all put into this so far. So, and You said the you word was you. a great group? Oh, wow. <laughs> or is a great group? Still going. Good, okay, I just wanted to clarify that. That we were dismissed. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thank them both for being here tonight too. So. All, three and them, all three of them here tonight. And I think <laughs> an implied mission on that motion, Kathleen, without having to make another mission is for the staff to to assemble, and prepare a timeline and, and a cost estimate. And in that timeline is given us a reasonable time when they can do all that work uh, and still get everything <coughs> that, that's high priority done, given that this is our year of the major closure downtown and all of the work that's going on with that. So we're not expecting it done tomorrow. I may be wrong, but I think Peter is willing to assist town staff with questions or help um, yes. in that, so. Thank you for volunteering, Peter. <laughs> yeah, Did you know? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so with that, thank you for the work you've done. You're not you're not dismissed, but you're thanked. And we'll be calling you back before long, I'm sure. Chief Shaw? Oh my God. <laughs> We're 20 minutes behind. You got two minutes. Well, I'll make the motion. I have lots of questions. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> for recognize the new guy, so that's <laughs> good evening. All. I'm here again for our annual purchase of uh, five sets of, or, or I'm sorry, for turnout gear for the fire department. Uh, again, this is an ongoing process through our capital budget, uh, helping us meet the NFPA standard of current firefighting gear within uh, 10 years of service. This year, we're seeking five sets of turnout gear and 10 pair of boots for a total amount of 14,682.03. And you're looking to get it uh, sole source purchase from Bergeron Protective Clothing? Correct. That's where all of your others have come from. Correct. Right? So they keep, keep the same brand. And I've checked it. other vendors with pricing as well, and they're well within the, the, the parameters of others as well. Okay. Uh, move to approve the request from Chief Shaw to purchase turnout gear from Bergeron Protective Clothing at a total cost of $14,682.03 under the sole source purchase provision of the town purchasing policy. Second. second. Moved in arm wrestling over the second. <coughs> oh no, the band, the band on this is the mic. <laughs> Are there any questions of Chief Shaw? Dan? No. Okay, good. Just want to come see you sometime. Absolutely. Learn, learn about it. Doors open 24-7. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Here are none. All in favor of supporting the request for turnout gear, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Thank you. Thanks, Chief. Thank you. Have a good night. Next is uh, our follow up, our annual after action review of town meeting and the uh, town meeting poll results. And actually, the mm -hmm. assembly poll. Individual is here. If you want to come up and be a participant <coughs> in this, Laura. And our tabulator. And our tabulator. <coughs> I love it. Wow. So we would love to hear what came out of that to the point, the greater number <coughs> of points. Look at that response. Does everyone look happy? <coughs> no. Yeah. Well, um, we, we got Good response, again, uh, I would say almost on par to what we had last year. And the intent of the poll this year was really to see if people were aware of our town committees and 
um, and particularly our website and how to navigate our website, which we did walk through, as you know, at town meeting. So, so you'll hear a bit about that. And we also um, asked them some satisfaction questions or um, agreement. Um, so Fred, our tabulator, who I thank enormously because it's uh, a great task, um, can give you some highlights from that. And we hope that in the future um, that the town poll be done electronically by SurveyMonkey and that we send it out as a link that way. And, and Fred has recommended that before. And <laughs> um, and and I, I've talked to Kathleen about that going forward, and I think that's what we'll do going forward so um, more people can participate electronically. And we still have print versions, obviously, you know, for those that couldn't do it that way. So Fred. Um, so you have, uh, it's Fred Dunnington, we, we have 227 surveys mm -hmm. returned. This was done, as I understand from Ann Webster, mostly just before uh, uh, Monday night town meeting. Some people who voted early got a chance to, to fill these out and then uh, that night and then during the day on Tuesday. So uh, obviously there's some overlap between those two numbers, but uh, um, there was a good, good number of people who uh, indicated they wanted to add their names added to the, to the uh, list. So 56% of the people who responded are already, already on your email, town email list. Your town email list is 1,277, and uh, about 42 uh, names were added. Some of them, Beth tells me, were already on. They'd forgotten or something. That uh, happens. And, uh, mm -hmm. Better so this, uh, just to put this in perspective with the town, uh, Anne informs me that there's 5,439 5, or so on the town checklist, some of which are uh, challenged these days but, but as to whether they're still on the checklist or not. And then Monday night, just over 200 were in attendance. And Tuesday, there was, well, there was town ballots and then the primary voting. There were 2,347 town ballots. So, you know, this 227 is not a huge percentage of those numbers. But mm -hmm. I think there's valuable information there. It, it is primarily just a poll of town meeting voters. Um, I believe that polling is important, uh, particularly because of how it makes people feel that they're engaged and that cut town cares about customer satisfaction uh, and improving service. And I think that aspect of polling is, is, is important. Um, and I think it's worth the time to, to do it right. Framing the questions thoughtfully and right, asking the right question is everything. And uh, I would implore you to delegate to other town department heads or other boards and committees of yours to take some time during the next year to think up some meaty questions and uh, and then really reflect on how they might be phrased. So, you know, uh, I don't want to get into the, I think the, the responses here that speak for themselves, but, you know, just to pick one, uh, if you ask people cold, you know, do you want to pay for parking downtown? <laughs> um, uh, you, you got pretty much the same answer this year as you did last year on that. Uh, I will say though, that in this year there was only one expletive. It says to encourage turnover and more yeah. access. Yeah. Is it, I'll say that there was only one expletive in the comments about the, <laughs> on this question. Um, but uh, anyway, I, I would encourage you to uh, ask, ask others to not just put it on one of your board members who is volunteering to uh, come up with this. Uh, it's a challenge to all of you. Somebody has to lead, though, Fred. Yeah. In the sermonly poll, it's <laughs> come on. Well, uh, well she's done a great job with it. Well, let's get into the results. <laughs> okay. Well, um, you, you have this on your on your uh, was posted today, I guess. Uh, so, the extent to which you agree or disagree with whether the community is welcoming. Um, more people uh, felt uh, that they agree or strongly agree with that clearly than any others. A couple of comments about they aren't so sure if uh, that would be the case if they were uh, a person of uh, non-white. Uh, 
I want to say that that's significant, especially in light of a community conversation that just happened this weekend on taking a stand against hate in which Chief Hanley participated. And, um, and I think that, that that does speak to something that we do well in Middlebury, that we are perceived as a welcoming community for the most part. Not that we don't have work to do, but you know, we, are, we are generally perceived that way. So I, I think that it's good for us to look at that. And we did ask that question last year, so we're just seeing how we're tracking. And we're still tracking positively. Um, so that's good to know. And then the next question uh, concerning uh, the idea of a portable toilet uh, on the town green, um, estimated $100 a month. Uh, uh, this agree and strongly agree. We're um, clearly, uh, if you add those two together, are a strong indication. The others, however, worried about how elegant or inelegant that would be. Um, and who would maintain it, and uh, sometimes porta-potties are, are not uh, all that attractive in some situations. So you know, there are yeah. some written comments about that. Right, and again, this was important to, to inform the task force on homelessness and the Public Health and Safety Committee on just, you know, kind of barometer um, check on how people <coughs> feel about that. And we, we are aware of the very things that Fred spoke to, maintenance, good maintenance, and aesthetics, and, and properly locating it. And you'll hear more about that in another report from the Public Health and Safety Committee and the Task Force on Homelessness soon. Uh, the notion of a uh, question on uh, uh, redesignating re some of the Main Street parking as paid parking to encourage turnover and more access. Um, 46% uh, not yet uh, strongly <laughs> even, disagreed even so another 16 or 17 percent disagreed <clears throat> and the others were neutral or um, mm -hmm. some in favor uh, I would say there are, there are actually a couple more in favor this year than were last year so that there general you topic uh, you have a long ways to go <laughs> um, the next question uh, do you agree with the notion of extending the parking attendant to a full year position. Uh, the greatest number of responses were in the neutral, neither agree nor disagree. They didn't really know how many hours a person worked now. And uh, I think on the disagree side of the of this uh, were those who might have answered this uh, because they just assumed to be able to park downtown, not ever, ever have any parking attendant find their car. Uh, and then the others who, who were thinking of it from the point of view of it uh, helping keep spaces open downtown and uh, keep away those people who work or live in the downtown and park as humans would close as they could rather than in more peripheral spots. Um, so, you know, people might have answered that different ways for different reasons, some right. personally and some out of their thought for the downtown. And what you have heard from other reports from the Public Health and Safety Committee is that people do value the parking attendant as a welcoming presence down, downtown. So we have extended um, the hours of the parking attendant. We were just trying to get a sense of how receptive people were to that trend. Um, and we'll continue to track that. Next question was uh, asking people if there are any committees or commissions on which they wish to serve. We got. Uh, I think pleasantly surprising number of people who uh, submitted their names, uh, some of which you will recognize as long-term residents and uh, uh, others of whom were pretty clearly new to the town. Mm -hmm. um, if, if you really want to learn more about these people, then you, they might volunteer on themselves. You can actually go through these questionnaires and see where they put their name down and then see how they responded to some of these other questions. Mm -hmm. so, <coughs> I, <coughs> cases. I couldn't help but uh, see that in some cases. Um, okay, which town websites were visited? Um, all, uh, town of Middlebury website uh, by just good. a little bit um, was the winner there. Mm -hmm. Ellsley Public Library second. Mm -hmm. uh, Middlebury College, you have middlebrycollege.com. It's actually middlebrycollege.edu. Mm -hmm. yes. Only three people oh, picked yes. up that that was the incorrect URL. Oh, my uh, goodness. URL. You're anyway, right. um, uh, so, but, but a remarkably broad 
connectivity. Again, this is a measure of people who, most of the people who have been at town meeting are engaged, more, more engaged of those who uh, come to town meeting and follow town affairs <coughs> pretty closely. Um, in terms of the information that was on the website, uh, far and away the Middlebury Ridge and Rail Project uh, site was the one most visited, and the others were all pretty even. Although there is a next in line was the uh, utilization of the on online parks and recreation registration. Um, Which is good. That was informing, you know, like of what people are looking for at our website. And for, again, yeah. this question was designed to really make people aware of the breadth of information that they could access, not that they had seen it, but really hopefully now they know that this is available to them. And there, uh, lastly, the comments. There's five pages of them. I, I won't read them uh, all to you. I'll just generally say that people uh, quite clearly favored the MUHS auditorium as a location. Uh, they thought the sound, uh, at least for those who were in attendance, was great, um, meaning the microphones and the, uh, uh, were, were good, uh, very much appreciated. Um, uh, That Susan, oh, Susan yeah. did a good Susan, job. Susan did a good job. They appreciate she's new, mm -hmm. but commendably, you know, working mm -hmm. hard at it. And uh, <coughs> uh, let's see. Uh, I tended to group these a little bit so that mm -hmm. when they came in, I put all the ones concerning the MUHS site and that first. And then second, there were some miscellaneous ones suggesting, uh, you know, thanks for not going through the budget in, in too great detail, as <laughs> was once done. <laughs> But it would be useful to have some more pie charts or other graphics like on blood brush issues. Um, mm -hmm. uh, suggestion to split out uh, asks for money uh, that are combined water improv improvements and police. They you know they think are kind of ought to be in separate asks rather than in one pot. But mm -hmm. that was one comment. Uh, otherwise, very many a lot of comments well run. They enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, Good and uh, there are a couple of comments that child care still doesn't work for some people who have young children who go to bed. Right, so <laughs> you know, possibly start early. the meeting even a little early, yeah. or like 6.30, maybe, even. Because yeah. of the weekday. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, and mics, uh, maybe a, f a few more mics, because it looked like it was still a struggle for people to reach uh, speakers with the mics. And... Uh, 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 lastly, a, a couple of comments on uh, the, the live streaming uh, did not work uh, this year. And, Which uh, was an exception this year, but we know that that'll be fixed for next year, um, that we knew that MCTV was in its migration. Um, so when you look at um, the rendering of town meeting at, at YouTube, it's excellent. You know, and you can, you can scroll forward and you can... <clears throat> listen in advance so even those that missed it on Monday night and still hadn't gone to the polls on Tuesday could watch it um, if they knew that they had the address. So the, the more opportunity we have to share that, that address ahead of time and even after town meeting, the better we'll be for next year. And that's the same address for all of our meetings as well moving forward. So just getting everybody right. moved over to the new address. Right, so again, if you're watching tonight, just know that you can, you can watch select board meetings and town meeting. They're live streamed uh, at YouTube, um, and there is an address on a postcard that Heather is holding that's available at the library and was available at town meeting. So there were six or seven suggestions on other opinion poll questions that could have been asked. Uh, I, as I said, I would encourage you to take the time or delegate to others to formulate some thoughtful questions that uh, on those if you think they have merit. There's a, the other comments uh, ran quite a variety of yeah. uh, topics yeah. and I, I uh, uh, my own personal comment from the one question I fill out was thank God for the local option tax revenues. <laughs> Uh, mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, they're broad, so you'll want to take some time to just scan them. We can't really summarize them for you. Um, yeah, but, I just, they I are just scan through them. And yeah, and, and 
And for those that are viewing, if you want to look at it, the document is at our website in our select board packet, which you now know how to get to <laughs> um, from, from the homepage. So just search for select board and then the packets for tonight's meeting, and then you can click and you can find the results of the town meeting poll there. There are several explicit comments thanking, appreciating the select board and Kathleen and uh, other town officials and expressing enormous gratitude for all who serve and thanking you for your work. Yes. Uh, I would just say that um, uh, it is a little tedious to compile these manually. What I have to do is put this into SurveyMonkey format and then manually load in. And it's, um, I took the better part of the day and over, I did it over the course of three days, uh, went together with typing up the things. And if you could get yourselves to think about the questionnaire a little beforehand and put this on SurveyMonkey beforehand then, and let people respond, and you put it on your email blasts and your meeting notices right under there where it says Middlebury Cares, let people fill it out online and then it compiles itself already. Yeah. You can still have a paper version for those who want to fill it out at the meeting, but mm -hmm. it would, um, you're likely to have volunteers willing to do this longer. Uh, right. <laughs> I won't say so, that I won't yeah. do this ever again, yeah. but it, uh, it's, uh, right. why well, not take advantage of? So I'll keep computer. that in mind next year as we get closer to that, and I'm willing to help coordinate I'm, I'm, that again. I'm going to be away. <laughs> Uh, further away next year. <laughs> so and we do. The town has to start an, earlier in the year. right. The town has an account with Survey Monkey, so we don't have to wait until a town meeting to poll residents if a committee or uh, a department has some important questions. You know, we have that capacity, and it, it is helpful to get an instant response. And Survey Monkey is, is very handy that way. Remember, we did that for recycling options. Yeah. So, yeah. That's so, thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you for thank Does you. Does the board Thanks. have any comments on the from the board's perspective as far as how the setup? Did you like sitting where we sat? And, oh, uh, yes. One did, commenter did that, said they wanted you back on stage. <laughs> Only one. Yeah, there were but I, a few people anecdotally to told me that they missed <laughs> seeing us up there. But a few, not many though. I think that. When I explained what our intent was, you know, they were like, "Oh, that's good." You know that they they understood that we were trying to represent being part of the of the town, you know, and not up there on stage. So that's what I heard. And I think that people, I, I certainly love the lawn signs as a way of announcing our um, town meeting and our poll uh, time and location. And I think that was a, a real great addition this year. Would it be possible to put the results of the town meeting poll and the comments with the rest of the town meeting stuff? Um, well, that's the, a good idea. Where the budget and because mm -hmm. we keep that All together, together from year to year, right? Okay. Very good idea. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And Fred, we're expecting support again next year. <laughs> Thank you. Year okay. <laughs> And if, Fred, if you're going to be traveling and we do it on Survey Monkey, you'll have no excuse. <laughs> How good the internet is. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Do you have a comment? Well, can we get some idea of how many children we had at the child care? Do we have numbers on that? Um, like, did we get some people to participate? I didn't know. I just feedback on that would be great. <clears throat> Anything else? Anne has something. Anne? I would like to make a few comments about town meeting. I thought it went incredibly well, and I thought um, the evening town meeting um, seemed very good. Susan did a great job, I thought, and she should certainly be commended for her first time job. And personally, I thought that the presentations that the board did, I don't really know what you changed, but something about them was much better than usual. And they seemed very clarifying. And I'm someone who's here in the offices 
every day, and I didn't really understand all of the um, articles that were being voted on. And I thought the way that they were presented and even the pie charts and everything were, were really helpful in clarifying. So I, I think it was too bad. Some people did say to me the next day at the polls that the MCTV broadcast did not come through. And I thought that was just really too bad. People can certainly see it on YouTube and, um, and that. But um, I think it would have been very helpful, too, for people voting the next day. You can't do anything about people voting early. Um, I would like to say thank you to USBCA members, Board of Civil Authority members, in terms of going along with me when I brought forward to move um, the election to the gym, because I would say that town meeting is not just the evening meeting, it's the whole Australian ballot the next day as well. And I think that was definitely the right move to make. I think it would have been very difficult to do the elections here and just the fact that we did have a really good turnout um, but it was also very kind of confusing about having two different elections going on at the same time and there were quite a few people who registered on the same day. We had over 130 who, who registered. I think that's going to be a trend and it's actually interesting the amount of room that it takes to be able to register voters, especially when they start coming down from the college in car loads <laughs> and that kind of thing. So um, another thing that the BCA had approved previously, I didn't know if I would implement it or not, but it was putting the early ballots into the tabulator on Monday. And I actually had three people uh, working at the gymnasium on Monday morning putting, like opening the envelopes and getting the ballots that had come in early uh, into the tabulators. And we really, we would not have had time on Tuesday. It would have been very <coughs> difficult. The three people actually entered 752 ballots into the tabulator and um, it took them three hours. So it, it's pretty labor intensive. Um, the checklist is certainly more complicated. Uh, Fred did get in touch with me today to kind of ask me some numbers and we actually haven't really confirmed numbers yet for the check-in. There was definitely about uh, 2,300 something that were town voters and probably closer to 2,600 uh, for the primary. Um, same day voter registration. Um, the counting went remarkably well. Um, and I would definitely say um, more people from the board, more people from uh, the BCA in general with the JPs are participating more like at the polls and taking shifts and uh, definitely coming in for the counting and being able to go to the school and that. Um, the counting isn't really counting. It's really adjusting what the tabulator did. And sometimes it can be very complicated with a lot of write-ins and, and that and seeing as this was the two elections and a lot of people were taking ballots and then not really sure what the ballots were for and so just depositing them blank, I was actually fairly afraid that a lot of people would do a lot of write-ins, but they didn't, and counting went very smoothly, and I actually sent most people home early. Um, I did have a conversation with Heather after, about her experience at the school, and she was actually there quite late into the evening, and so that's just another thing I was thinking that that maybe we should change in the way that we do things and that possibly I should be sending, they always ask that you send uh, two people to help them count all the ballots, but they never had to count for a race before. They counted their yes, no budget questions, but they never had to really count for board seats and things like that. 
we always had them on the tabulator. Um, and now they're not on the tabulator, they do that by hand. Um, so I'm thinking that we should probably think in terms of sending more people. Um, if it's getting easier for us to count and harder for them to count, then we should probably be supporting that. But um, yeah, and I just kind of wanted to put out there that um, the whole. Pizza. <laughs> they serve pizza. Oh, they serve pizza. <laughs> yeah, just definitely wanted to put out there um, that I think we need to think about the evening meeting and how that goes, but I, I really appreciate any um, amount of thought that the BCA definitely puts into the whole process um, and through the Australian ballot and all of it and that and um, that went pretty smoothly. Um, but um, the polls themselves were a little bit of a chaos just because of uh, so much to keep track of. But so it's my input. Thank Thanks, you. Anne. Yeah. I would say compliment you and too on the way that you had the polling site set up because it was a large volume but it, it flowed really well. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought, you know, this is the second time I guess we've had it at the gym, right? We had the presidential. Right, and that, and that, felt, a lot, and that felt a lot more voluminous and less easy to manage. This was really well done. And I had a lot of head compliments from people because they felt like, okay, I had to wait in line, but it wasn't much. It was really good for people who had some mobility issues. They, they were able to flow through. So compliments and I just set that up. And I think that's a good model. Well, I would give thanks to um, Ellen Pearl Meyer. She uses a wheelchair, mm -hmm. and I had her test everything out. Oh, <laughs> per per perfect. 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 Good. Yeah, she and no wonder she. No wonder she went through so well. She was very clear. Yeah, no, it was, it was great. So if there's nothing more, I'm going to move on. Mm -hmm. You got something important, or you were going to grab the mic? I just, I just really appreciated that we all had a chance to speak. And I felt like it was pretty sped out this year and all had an opportunity, so I liked that. And I did like sitting down in the audience. Um, so that's it. Okay. And we can process this over the next year for changes, but uh, file away anything that you want to change. So when we're talking about it 11 months from now, will you remember it? Uh, select board retreat. Kathleen, we talked a little bit about that today. What's your what's your thoughts on on that? I uh, think at this point we should go forward uh, as planned on uh, March seventeenth. Uh, I had hoped to provide some uh, visuals and supporting information to the board, and we are working on that but keeping in mind that um, we are focused right now on COVID-19 and making our contingency plans um, as appropriate. So I, I think we have a solid enough agenda here and uh, most of you are familiar with all of the things that are on our plate. So we might as well go forward and discuss them as planned. Okay, and, that, and the discussion that Kathleen and I had was that there's a significant staff load right now on on the contingency planning and so whether that it was reasonable to expect staff to be prepared for our offsite and so she just she didn't throw up the white flag here so we're we'll drive on um, take a look at the at the draft agenda third draft I was going to ask that. Yeah. Uh, we for this one or <coughs> I think we should. <coughs> do, do we? You like five or five thirty better? Start at five. You mean? <coughs> Until when? Tuesday. Uh, plan on two hours. I, I think five thirty. And we'll have dinner, we we'll have sandwiches there. So 5.30? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's 
Okay, questions on the agenda? Um, it's, uh, it is a flexible agenda when we get into it, but uh, we wanna cover through those areas and uh, you know, talking to governance, timelines, reviewing initiatives, and, and then talking about capacity and setting priorities. Are there any questions on that? I'm just wondering if two hours is going to be enough. Or huh. That um, seems I, like a lot of stuff. So, so let me... Let me suggest that if we don't get it done in two hours, we would set another time to, to reconvene. Yeah. I think a two-hour meeting is enough uh, uh, to have really constructive dialogue, and we get beyond that, and I think people start to fall out mentally. Right. So these are pretty important discussions, and I would rather us be fresh and, and sharp in our discussion on those topics. If we come in preparing for three hours, we'll be there three hours. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Next is uh, an amendment to engineering agreement for Exchange Street. Kathleen, you want to walk us through that? So you have in your packet a proposed amendment to our contract with uh, Lamero and Dickinson, the engineering firm for the Exchange Street project. Um, this. Uh, amendment is for an amount not to exceed $6,851 um, for development of final plans, bid documents, and support for construction of the project as in being available for questions during uh, construction of the project by Vermont Agency of Transportation and Federal uh, Highway Administration uh, guidelines, we are going to need to bid out the construction oversight uh, to another uh, engineering firm, similar to what we did with the uh, Seymour Street Pulp Mill Bridge project. You want me to make a motion? I move to authorize uh, Town Manager Kathleen Ramsey to sign Amendment 2 to the Town's Engineering uh, Services Agreement with Lamore and Dickerson for the Exchange Street sidewalk and path project for the not to exceed cost of $6,851. Moved and seconded, are there any questions on that? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Kathleen, does this get us ready to go to bid? Yes. Super. Uh, Lindsay, check warrants. All right. Um, I move to approve total expenditures in the amount of $405,537.28, consisting of $300,677.61 for accounts payable and $104,859.67 for payroll for the period of February 27th, 2020 through March 10th, 2020. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Kathleen, have you done a new uh, duty roster on the? I have, and that will be available next week. Perfect. Our manager's report. Okay. Uh, briefly, we have the Parks and Recreation 2020 Spring Activity Guide is now available on the town's website. And there are piles of them around town at convenient locations like the town offices and the recreation center. Um, the LCT has prepared a list of resources to assist municipalities in planning for the coronavirus. Um, noting that that was last week I reported that and I'm very familiar with it. Um, and there's also current correspondence in your packet if anyone's interested in uh, taking a closer look at those. Um, Fred noted that in the uh, town meeting poll, there was uh, some people that re-signed up for email. What we found is that uh, townofmiddlebury.org emails, in some cases for Gmail users in particular, were going into spam. Uh, as Lindsay found out, she wondered why she hadn't heard from me lately, and she looked in her spam and 
there I was. So uh, if you're out there, you haven't heard from us lately, look in your spam folder and drag us into your inbox and help train Google uh, that uh, we're not spammers. Yes. You're not spam to us, Kathleen. <laughs> <clears throat> Okay, board member concerns. Dan, you get to start. Nothing. Nothing. This is fun, right. thank you. Where are you? Uh, congratulations, Brian and Heather, for being the chair and the uh, vice chair again. And I want to welcome Dan to the board. Look forward to working with you. Uh, I had a question for Kathleen about, uh, we signed up for this, I think the spring training What's the dates? I'm just, I don't have those. So we have March 21st is the all day Select Board Institute in Montpelier. Mm -hmm. um, and then April 1st is that, uh, they're calling it a half day, but I think it's 1230 to 330. That's here. That's here okay. at the Middlebury Town Offices. Okay. Um, so I have a couple of signups uh, for the Select Board Institute. Uh, anybody else wants to join in, please let me know uh, yep. by the end of the week. I'm already on it, right? Yep. Okay. Yep. All right. Thank you. Victor. Okay. <coughs> Heather? Um, I have gotten several, um, se a lot actually more than I expected comments from residents uh, saying a great town meeting, and I didn't say that earlier. So. Um, kudos to Kathleen and staff and to us for a good meeting. I did get a lot of good feedback. Um, and I think the most um, enjoyable part for me was that I heard some no's because I often feel like town meeting is all just yes. Everybody just says yes, the no's don't speak up. And um, I know that not everybody agrees. And so I was really encouraged that we still have people willing to say no in a voice vote um, from the floor, so. That, that was not an easy topic to say yes or no, right? <laughs> they were. Nick. As we, we get into our next uh, <coughs> board year here, it seems we haven't heard from the, our economic health task group in a while. I'm kind of wondering where they are, what their progress is, and they may not be complete, but I think it's time that we at least have them come by or a representative come by and at least let us know where they're their progress is or if they're doing anything and so, so that we can get an update at least because it uh, seems long overdue and I think we were supposed to have them more frequently so I'd like to see them in a not too distant future. Kathleen, aren't they preparing to bring their recommendation mm -hmm. to us? Yeah, yeah. We, are, we are meeting next Thursday, uh, this, this Thursday mm -hmm. uh, we have a meeting. I did reach out to Fred a couple of weeks ago asking him the same thing you did and he said there is a small working group who was working on the presentation, uh, but I agree with your concern that uh, even last time we met was in November, so that's like a four month yeah. gap. So there should be at least some update to the select board about the progress. Thank you. Lindsay. Um, I wanted to say <clears throat> that um, in light of you know, the news today about the college. This is going to be a time where we're sort of tested as a community, and I just want people to think about if you are in a position to help out one of the organizations that will be helping people who are really hurt by this. Um, you know, hourly people usually don't get any kind of compensation. If they can't go into work, then they don't get paid. Um, so if you have uh, the ability to make donations to HOPE, or CVOEO or one of the other organizations that are going to be taking care of our community members, this would be a good, a really good time to do it. Great point, Lindsay. Thank you. So um, I just want to thank the board for our vote of confidence. Um, I think we're doing a lot of important things, and I appreciate the opportunity to lead the board. Um, and I want to thank Kathleen for her clairvoyance that uh, was pointed out. Uh, uh, you know, the town meeting continues to improve and it's amazing how we can continue to improve year after year. So I think that's great. We're a learning organization and I'm proud to be a part of it. Uh, we have a reason for an executive session and uh, lead us into it. 
In accordance with Vermont's open meeting law requirements, I move that the board <coughs> find that premature, premature general knowledge of the consideration of legal matters would clearly place the select board at a substantial disadvantage because the select board risks disclosing its litigation strategy if it discusses the legal matters in public. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? I further move that the board enter into an executive session to discuss legal matters under the provisions of Title I, Section 313A1 of the Vermont Statutes. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? <laughs> okay. Executive session at 9 or 8.42.